Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special figure unboxing and review we're going to be looking at the year 2000 released limited edition Shining Magnus or also known as Matrix Glow Magnus. Yes he has another name and I'll refer to that a bit later on. So what we're going to do with this video we're going to unbox him live, have a look at the entire contents in the packaging. We're of course going to do some comparisons with him and his original generation oneself. Not just the toy but also the packaging as well, because for those of you who are unaware of the Japanese Transformers, it is pretty much an exact copy, or as, as it is intended to be, reissue of the Japanese figure, just in the different colour scheme. I'm also going to do my best to try and explain the colour, and of course his origins, and where he came from. So, we're going to start off by looking at the box, and the box is beautiful for a start. We've got this amazing, again, this is pretty much an exact replica of the Generation 1 box. Uh, so we've got the artwork on the front, which still consists of the error, where of course the chest plate should be blue, but it is in fact white. So if I bring it closer to you, there's the lovely artwork for Ultra Magnus himself. We've got C there. This stood for Cybertrons, which is the Japanese word for Autobots. His reference number was 69. And if you're wondering what Scramble City was, yes, it refers to the um, combiners who can do the same thing. But it was also the name of the cartoon that was being aired in Japan way back um, in 1986, funnily enough. Again, we've got the pictures on the side. And the interesting thing is that we've got actual toy images now. So we've got the correct chest plate if it was the standard Ultra Magnus. It's just got images of the standard Ultra Magnus. There's no images, of course, of the figure that is inside. And unfortunately, this huge sticker here is really taking away the beautiful artwork that is on the back. So what I'll do now is I'll just quickly bring in, as I say, the original Japanese one. So most people will be very familiar with not this one, but the standard Hasbro one. So there's the standard Hasbro. And that's what, again, we pretty much all recognise. But the Japanese boxes were a lot smaller and they had different battle scenes. So on the back of the standard Hasbro one, we had that particular piece of artwork. Whereas on the Japanese one, if we get this over here again, and again, everything was the same. I'm just going to spin it round. You've got the toy image there. We've got this wonderful battle scene there, which is the 86 battle scene of the Titans, where you would normally see these two, but they would, of course, be in their base modes. That's absolutely stunning, that piece of artwork. And again, as you can see, it's an exact replica of the box, um, but it doesn't have the foam. We have the foam on the inside of the original, whereas with this one, We've got a bit of a mix up in all honesty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up and I need to quickly apologise right now as I open this up. I don't have any of the paperwork inside. I was hoping to find some before I managed to do this video, but I'll tell you a bit more about it in a second. There's five robot points on the inside of this flap. And that was something I think that was brilliant that they did with the Japanese boxes that meant that you didn't, of course, have to cut open any of the box you didn't have to cut it up you could just cut away the side flaps this side is still sealed so i'm not going to open that so anyway what i was about to say is um this is again very limited edition piece it was only available at the 20th century toy museum toy show it was held on december the 26th in the year 2000 it was at a department store in yokohama japan and it is literally limited to only 800 pieces so that's why i'm struggling to find relevant paperwork with it however this shouldn't detract anything away from the toy and this is already an opened contents box so i'm not taking out a brand new sealed one now you can see in all of its glory just how bright yellow it is so yes it's got an adult name for the word urine or a kid's name they can sometimes call him urine or wee wee magnus but obviously the adult word we're not going to use there we've got the sticker for the 20 um if it was coming close of course to the 20 year anniversary in the year 2000 so in japan they were starting to make uh, pretty much the reissues which we now saw and they went on to toys r us and everything like that right i've got the pieces in here all of them again beautiful translucent plastic hopefully now i've not took this out of the box yet myself I can take this out without too much trouble and just continue with the video. So it looks like I can. Right. So we can keep this going all in one take without having to stop and start it. So there's the trailer. 
Um, I'll have a go at getting out the missile launchers in a second because I want to see if they've got the famous Takara launching power. So what we've got here is we've got, of course, the yellow cab. And again, you're all probably wondering why yellow, why yellow? And I'll be honest, in fact, I'm going to show you right now. It's down to this. This is the reason why. So this is the Marvel adaptation of the Transformers, the movie. And as I say, he's referred to as Matrix Glow. Um, Ultra Magnus, but as we all know in the movie, the Matrix Glow is blue. But in the comic, and I've got a couple of pictures here, not great ones, but when Optimus Prime passes Ultra Magnus the Matrix, we've got all these yellow beams here all coming out from around him, like so, yellow in the eyes. And this is where they took um, the idea or that theory from. And again, just to prove why they did this just pull that out i've got another picture at the back obviously i know this isn't ultra magnus but i just want to prove to you again why they were using or saying matrix glow so this is of course hot rod or rodimus prime getting the matrix and there of course is this yellow glow this yellow beam all behind it so the reason for him being bright yellow is down to these guys there we go so let's have a quick look at the cab again so we're very familiar with the cab um i am going to transform it all in a second but let's have a look so we've got lovely it is black if the um if it's looking a little gray it could just be because of the light reflecting off it we've got rubber tires we've got chrome there chrome on the sides and i'm not sure if this has been transformed but i will do it as i say in a second i'm just going to bring in i'm purely going to do um ultra magnus uh, comparisons because for obvious reasons with we get um, optimus prime involved or convoy as well we could be here all day so huge huge difference there you can see that straight away let's slide this out the way and let's slide the trailer into position the trailer is literally it's translucent plastic it's beautiful that is is it a sticker i think it is a sticker so no tamper graphs just yet it is yep it's definitely a sticker and it looks i suppose all the detail on it now really stands out so it does it the world of good really liking this thinking it looks great again rubber tire version if anybody wanted to know there's the trailer i'm going to attach as i say a few things to it so let's have a look at some of the pieces and again we can do some direct comparisons as well i've got no idea oh no there's oh there's the missiles are on the sprue so i'm not going to fire these particular missiles i'll be firing some of the standard red ones again all translucent plastic the head we've got the silver tipped head there um what i'm referring to is the fact that ultra magnus had two different heads so we had this one which was the silver tipped and the standard one which obviously didn't um, again, if you want to see any Ultra Magnus videos, there's some quite detailed ones on this channel already as well. Right, so let's attach just a couple of these because we need to. So we're going to attach this underneath. I'm going to do the transformation process as well on here, guys, for you as well. Because um, I want to do it myself and see what it's like myself. So let's pop that in there. Let's make sure that it fits nice and snug. There we go. I've probably put it the wrong way around looking at that. I think I have. There's a schoolboy error for you straight away, but I'm just going to keep it going. I did. I had it the wrong way around. Um, and as I say, I will be building this fully up. Whether or not it's it's been used like that before, I don't know. But this is not going to play, is it? Let's get the fists. Do some comparisons with the fists. Again, as you'd expect, it's just translucent. It looks great. What I'm going to do now, though, is I'm just going to bring this to the side. And I'm going to bring the normal Ultra Magnus trailer in. Massive difference, isn't it? Huge, huge difference. What I might try and do is pop them on top of each other so we can carry. It probably won't balance too well, but we can see there if I bring this in. Just, is it going to balance? Wow, there we go. There's some huge straight up comparisons for you. Really, really different as you'd expect right let's move the standard guy out of the way and let's have a look at him in his of course fully combined mode we'll do very quickly look at the cab so let's transform him super quick and pull his head out i'm not oh there you go look at that lovely head sculpt and funnily enough he does have small black fists again all to match huge holes so he can handle the gun 
if he wanted to. Um, not that way round, of course, that way round. Let's do it, we might as well. Let's do a full showcase in this video because I'm probably never going to transform him again in all honesty once he's built up into his um, full mode. So there we go. I suppose again, very quickly, I'm not going to transform him, but you can just see how vastly different it is. Right then, let's have a go at transforming the whole thing into a robot. What I'm just very quickly doing off camera is I've managed to get them out of the packaging that were holding it in place. So here we go, let's do a transformation process for, this can be any Ultra Magnus, obviously. It could even be, um, I think, one of the convoys or Delta Magnus, whatever he's known as, in original G1 terms. So I've folded out the top part super carefully. Is this even on screen? Yes, it is. I'm gonna bring these up into position. Nice and clicky ratchets. I'm gonna just slide this up very carefully, bring this in the same. Same on the other side. If I'm looking like I'm doing it extremely gingerly, that's because I am. And for long time viewers of this channel, sometimes things tend to break on me and I'm totally gonna to jinx myself now. One of my most recent videos using a translucent plastic figure did exactly that. So I think that's all I'm gonna say on that. Let's take the fist out of here. And all we need to do, we need to sort of go back to a half um, a cab just with his legs folded down. So turn the toes down. What we've got here is the headlights basically where the fists would go and on the inside of the car transporter. It's even harder to see with it being translucent. He's of course got these two tabs. So again, I'm gonna super carefully, that's probably gonna tip over, try and line these up again with you guys seeing. Line it up, that's gone in, that's gone in. Perfect. So now what you would do is you would bring these around. It just makes sense to put the cabin before clicking these into place, just because they can get in the way. I've just realized what I've done. Everybody's screaming at me. You forgot to pull the head up. Um, and that's what I need to do. So I'm gonna carefully open this. I know I can do it like this. I've done it loads of times as a kid. Opened it like so. So the main reason, of course, why you need the head is to attach the head to it. But you can see again how translucent it is. You can see him straight through there, all the detail. Lovely, right, so let's have a look at him start to take shape. You can see why they've gone with a silver face there. They would have had to have gone through the silver face because obviously it's translucent and you would have just seen a full black face behind it. So you can see exactly why they've gone for that. Let's attach these parts to the side like so. And let's attach the large fists. I've got the other one of the connector cabs, which is gonna fit. Yes, it is nice and easily. Let's get the fist, make sure they're the right way round. Like so. One more's over here. Wow, I've not built up an Ultra Magnus figure in as long as I can remember. So this is, this has been fun. Great memories of doing this. He's pretty much done, isn't he? Do I need to adjust the camera? Maybe pull it up in a little. Maybe I will in a second. So we obviously don't need the small black fists. I'm gonna put them there. We obviously don't need the missiles. I'm not gonna use them. There is the spare connector, which there always is with all Ultra Magnus figures. They do come with two. And we've got the gun, which to be honest, I always thought as a child, they could perhaps could have got a bigger gun because of course that gun can be carried by just the cab part very quickly. There's a comparison with that there. Let's move this up and over. And there is your standard Ultra Magnus, which to be honest, I still really like this. I still think the color scheme looks absolutely brilliant. Let's see if the Takara missiles are any different then. So these obviously, sometimes they don't even really fire, do they? These were incredibly well neutered or I suppose just restricted for safety reasons. Let's see, lots of Takara stuff with it being Japan, etc. had different safety laws. That is why you can see straight away there's a huge difference between that. I don't mind doing that again. Let's just show you. You can hear the tension in that when I'm pushing it in. To be honest, you can feel it. So the safety laws, as you can see, were very, very different in Japan as to what they were in the UK, as well as the USA. We didn't have the firing missiles and the firing things like that, the firing projectiles, shall we say, in 
in, in the UK like that either. It would have made the toys far more fun, to be honest. But it could have been a lot worse in, um, obviously, I think it was Italy. Again, you can check out the gig review. They didn't even have the projectiles. They had stoppers. So I think that's pretty much it, guys. Um, that's the first time I ride him out of the box as well. So it's been a great experience sharing this guy with you. I hope you enjoyed looking at him. Um, again, I hope I've helped you uh, give you a bit of a story of who he is, um, why he's yellow. Um, I suppose the only other thing to say is, unless I've already said it already, is he's limited to literally 800 pieces. So he is very sought after. So if you are after one, unfortunately, it might just be a case of scouring um, eBay for him uh, because you're not... I don't think you're going to pick these up in shops. These are going to have been picked up by uh, collectors. So um, there you go. As I say, this is, he was released on December the 26th in the year 2000 in Yokohama, Japan, in a toy department store on that particular date. He is Shining, Matrix Glow, Urine, whichever version you want to call him, Magnus. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Keep your ideas and suggestions coming in for other videos and take care. Thanks for watching, like and comment, and don't forget to subscribe.